I'm back at it again, screen printing skateboard decks, and I wanted to show you all the tips and tricks I learned along the way with printing my newest skateboard graphic. I think it came out pretty nice. My most popular video on my YouTube channel by far is my original video where I screen printed skateboard decks, which was about two years ago. Although it was really rewarding, the process of screen printing skateboard decks was also really frustrating, and I didn't think I'd ever do it again after that. After some time, however, I realized that it's pretty fun, and so I definitely wanted to screen print skateboard decks again. So, not long later, I reprinted one of the graphics in a new colorway. And about a year later, I was able to get my hands on some more blank decks, and so I printed a new graphic, this time with glow-in-the-dark ink, which I think came out looking really cool. Most recently, I did a small run for my friends of this tiger graphic, which was pretty sweet. And so I think I'm really starting to get a hang of the process. I got some more blank decks and started working on a new graphic. This time I'm doing a graphic based on a little chibi sized SD Gundam. It's going to be a five color print. So I got it all laid out in Photoshop and set up my color separations. And this time I'm even trying to do a top graphic. So I set up the color separations for that as well. After I had everything ready to go, I just need to print out all my different layers onto transparency film. I'm using the same laser printer that I've always used, and using transparency film in a laser printer is probably the cheapest way to make films to burn your screens for screen printing. There are other materials you can use. I know one that you can use for inkjet printers is called Pictorico, but it is a little bit more expensive, and I don't even own an inkjet printer anyways. After I print out all the transparencies, I just double check them for alignment to see that everything is going to work out okay. A couple of my layers that I need to print were too large for a single transparency, so I had to print them onto two sheets. Once I had the two sheets needed to compose the whole image, I lined them carefully and then temporarily taped them together. Once I had both pieces taped together, then I just cut it with scissors. This process probably looks a little bit confusing, and maybe there's better ways to do this. But, once I finished cutting it apart, I then had two pieces that could now match together perfectly like a puzzle. I still had to carefully align them together a second time, and then permanently tape them together so that they would stay in position for burning the screen. Like I mentioned before, I only had to do this for a couple layers, but getting everything aligned perfectly was really important so that everything would register correctly when it prints. The second set of transparencies is the final line art which will be the last print layer in this project. When I lined up these transparencies together, I could see that they aligned well. With all my transparencies prepared, all I had to do was set up to expose my screens, which I had already coated with emulsion. Exposure time varies depending on the emulsion you use, the lights that you use. For me, it was about 40 minutes, and then I could rinse it out in the sink. I had a ton of screens to burn for this project because I had so many layers to print. Not just for the main graphic, but the top graphic as well. This final last layer of the line art was a little bit tricky, and so I'm using some skateboards and old trucks to weigh down glass on top of the transparency so that it had good contact with the surface of the emulsion. While exposing the screens, generally speaking, wasn't too out of the ordinary, I wanted to talk a little bit about making the screens themselves. While you can buy commercially made screens for screen printing, I like to build my own, partly because it saves money. The other important reason, though, is it allows me to control the tension of the screen mesh itself. I already knew this the first time I screen printed on skateboards, but I underestimated how loose I should actually make that screen mesh. Because the skateboard deck has concave, it's nice to have loose screen mesh so that it will be able to conform to the surface of the deck when I pull the squeegee across it to print. The screens that I stretch for this project are definitely looser than anything I've ever done in the past, and it definitely made a big difference in my ability to get a good print on the skateboard decks. That being said, from what I've seen others do, I think I could probably go a lot looser. 
It's a bit of a balancing act because I think if you make the screen mesh too loose, there will be some difficulty in coating it with emulsion and exposing that screen. There's definitely some room to play around with how you stretch your screen and I think only experience can get you to the best result. Although it may not be super apparent, the screen on the left with the yellow mesh definitely has lower tension than the one with the white mesh. Despite the lower screen tension, coating the emulsion onto the screens wasn't anything out of the ordinary. I used Jacquard brand photo emulsion because it comes in a smaller container and is cheaper than buying Speedball, especially because I don't use it up very fast. After I coat the screens with emulsion, I need to put them in a dark place to dry. So I usually just put them under the sink because it's a good spot. I also try and scrape as much of the leftover emulsion out of my scoop coater back into the jar so that I can use it later. I wash out my scoop coater in the sink and set it up to dry and then I put the emulsion jar into the fridge because it lasts longer at lower temperatures. The other thing that I did for this project was to make a new special curved squeegee. Previously, I either used a straight squeegee or tried cutting a split in the handle like this, as someone once suggested to me, but it didn't work very well because it made it so I couldn't get any leverage with the split handle. So I'm taking that split handle squeegee and pulling out the squeegee blade so that I can use it in a new custom curved squeegee. I've seen other people use custom curved squeegees. I know that Carpet Company, for example, was selling curved squeegees with 3D printed handles during one of their seasonal drops. I would have liked to have bought one of those, but they are too expensive for me. It took me a bit of thinking to figure out a way that I could make a handle for a custom curved squeegee. What I ultimately landed on was making the handle out of some pieces of scrap quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I had. I cut a series of strips of the plywood, and there was a couple of them that I also needed to plane down ever so slightly. I put them into a vise to check how it would fit, and I set up a couple of blocks of wood in the vise that would help create the curve when I clamped it down. Everything looked good, so I just put some glue on each of the layers of plywood, and then I put it all together in a little sandwich. Then I stuck that into the vise with the little jig made with blocks of wood and cranked that vise down, which created the curve. And as the glue set, it made that curve permanent. There might be a better way to do this, but this was the quickest and most efficient way that I was able to come up with. After the glue set, all I had to do was simply pull it out of the clamps. And then I ended up adding a couple extra strips of the plywood to this handle just so I could have something to get a better grip on. I put the whole arrangement back into the vise so that the new strips of plywood that were being attached would conform to the same curve of the handle. After the glue was all cured, I pulled it out and it was looking pretty good, but I needed to trim it down to the correct length. I put the piece of squeegee blade into the groove of this new handle and marked where the ends would be so I knew where to cut. It was kind of an awkward shape since it wasn't a flat piece of wood anymore, so the easiest tool for me to cut this cleanly was the bandsaw. I just carefully cut off both ends and then it was ready for some final shaping. I first took it over to the disc sander just so that I could sand down the ends to make them nice and even, as well as the top of the handle. After I gave it that initial sanding on the disc sander, I then took it over to the router table and used a roundover bit to make the top of the handle have a nice smooth curve. That would make it a lot more comfortable to use. With the shape of the handle complete, I needed to figure out how I was going to attach the squeegee blade. The original squeegee had the blade held in place with staples. What I decided to do is what I've seen on other handmade squeegees. I'm going to hold the squeegee blade in place with some nuts and bolts. 
I screwed some pilot holes as well as some countersinks. And then once I had those holes set, I then put the squeegee blade into the handle and drilled the same holes into the squeegee blade. Then I was able to just use some simple nuts and bolts, screw it in place, and that held the squeegee in really nicely. I did a little bit of final sanding, and then as a step to complete the project, I just gave it a few coats of clear lacquer to make it water resistant since I would have to be washing this off after use. With that, the curved squeegee was done. With all of the prep work out of the way, it was time to finally print my boards. Each screen needs to have the edges taped off with screen tape just so that ink can't squeeze out the edge of the screen. That can make a big mess. With my screens all taped off, I could then get ready to start setting up the jig that holds the skateboard deck in place while I print. It's a pretty simple setup. It's just some scraps of plywood that has hardware sticking out of it that fits into the bolt holes of the skateboard deck. Those can be screwed down to hold the deck securely while I print. The screen itself is held into place with these special screen clamps. These allow the screen to hinge up and down as needed. Once I have a screen in place, I'm just going to lay a transparency of one of my graphics that I need to print so then I can align that to the screen itself. This process is called registration. So I'm trying to register the image that I want to print to the surface that I'm printing on. And what I'm going to do first is do a test print just onto paper. I would hate to go to print my very first board and have it be all messed up. So it's nice to do a quick little test print to make sure that everything is going well. I was also excited to try out this new curved squeegee. It definitely seemed like it helped, especially in combination with the lower tension screens that I was using. This top graphic is intended to be printed with two colors, and I was really excited to see that this first base color, which is white, was already looking really good. Little did I know things were going to probably go a bit south with this project. While the white layer went pretty smoothly, when I got around to doing the second layer, which was with black ink, I ran into some serious trouble. I did a test print onto paper again, just like before, and everything was looking pretty good. I was pretty happy with the result, so I figured I was safe to go ahead and just start printing. One thing you'll see me doing right here is I'm doing a flood pass, where you try and flood the screen with ink before you actually put it down onto the print surface. And you can see that I got a bunch of squeeze out, or blow out, I'm not sure what the technical term is for it, which basically ruined this top graphic. Now fortunately, I'm using just some regular speedball acrylic ink, and so because the print was fresh, it was easy to wash off, and then I was able to reprint it later. Because I was frustrated, I decided to take a break, and I screen printed some little zipper coin pouches instead, which went pretty well. These coin pouches were just intended to be a little extra freebie to go with these boards that I made, and I think they're really cute and I'm really happy with how they came out. I did a bunch of different colors, and they ended up being pretty popular with my friends. After the coin pouches were done, I got back to trying to finish printing the top graphic, and I ran into yet more trouble. This print wasn't too bad, but then something really bad happened with the next one. I didn't understand what was happening as I was pulling the squeegee, but if you look closely, you'll see I pull so hard that the screen shifted in the screen clamps, which means that it moved and moved out of registration. Sense. I had to clean that one off and reprint it later as well. I got my screen re-registered and then things started to go a lot more smoothly. I made sure those screen clamps were tightened down really tight because I did not want that screen to ever shift again. Because the speedball ink that I'm using is just an acrylic ink that's normally meant for paper surfaces, it's not that durable. So it's really important that after the ink is dry, 
that I give it a nice clear coat with some Rust-Oleum enamel lacquer. This is very similar to the clear coat that is already on the blank decks, but it's just going to seal that print into place so that it can't chip or scratch off easily. While most wood shops don't screen print their skateboard decks anymore and instead use heat transfers, even if they did still screen print them, they would probably use something more professional like an enamel or solvent based ink. But I find that the Speedball acrylic ink works well for my purposes and just coating it with that clear lacquer is a great solution to make that print permanent. Once all the top graphics were done, I was ready for the main show, which was the actual skateboard graphic. And with all the frustration behind me, things started to go pretty smoothly. I was still doing test prints for each layer, but I was definitely able to print with a lot more confidence regardless. This base coat already had me excited. When you do that full pass of a nice big graphic on the bottom of a skateboard, it's really exciting. It still really strained my hands to do these squeegee pulls onto the skateboard decks because of the concave. But with that curved squeegee, it made it a lot easier than if I had used a regular straight squeegee. I think if I were ever to do this again, and I suppose I am going to do it again, I think I'm gonna make a new curved squeegee that is even more significantly curved. One thing I realized once I started printing is that although I did make a curved squeegee, it was pretty mellow. Compared to the concave of the actual deck, the ends of my squeegee blade weren't quite making contact unless I really pressed on them. Another thing I think I'll do different next time is that even though I made low tension screens for this print run, I think I would make them even lower tension. I did have some slight issues with a couple of the colors. You can see on this test print for the red that I got some smearing at the bottom. Fortunately, I was able to clean it off with a paper towel and get right back into printing and everything went pretty smoothly after that. Here's one thing I've noticed about printing on skateboard decks. While other surfaces, whether it's a poster or a t-shirt, you might want to do a flood pass before you actually pull the print. I found on these skateboard decks that if I do flood passes, it only causes problems. So I like to just pull the bead of ink across the screen and call it a day. I've also found that with firm pressure, you also want to pull that squeegee as fast as you can. Whenever I've pulled the squeegee too slow, that's usually what causes ink to blow out on the bottom side of the screen and make smears. I know that throughout this video I've said, oh, I got really excited because of this or that as the process continued and as the print started to develop with each successive color. But once I got that base coat with all these primary colors laid down, that's when I started to get really excited because this was starting to look awesome. It's not really apparent on video, but the inks that I'm using are actually pearlescent inks, so they have a little bit of metallic shine to them. In person, in the right light, it looks really cool. Finally, I was onto the last layer, which is this line art that is being printed with black ink, and this is what pulls it all together. Once I did this first test print onto paper and everything was looking clean, I knew I was in the zone. Seriously, the test print came out really good. I was so happy. Finally, the moment of truth. The first complete printed board. Oh, it came out so cool. And I was also excited to see the print on so many different colors of veneer that were on the skateboard decks. Orange, green, blue, purple. I thought it looked awesome on all of them. That's one of the funnest things about printing these skateboard decks, is seeing how cool it comes out on the various colors. Seriously, look at that, it came out so clean. Speaking of clean, my least favorite part is clean up afterwards, but it's gotta be done. 
the prints came out really good. And although I was really happy with the final result, my work wasn't done because just like the top graphic, I had to give these a couple layers of clear coat to make sure that the print was nicely sealed onto the surface of the deck. I ended up printing a total of 25 boards, which took up basically my whole apartment, and it was a lot of work, but I'm so happy with the result. When people see my videos of screen printing skateboard decks, whether it's here on YouTube or on TikTok, they often ask where they can get them. And I'm sad to report that I've basically already sold all of these locally or to friends, but I do want to print more so that I can make them available for whoever wants them. If you're interested, check the description box on this video for more information on when I'll print more to make them available for everyone. One last thing. Everybody always asks me where I get my blank decks. I get mine from Generator Distribution, but there are other wood shops like PS Sticks or Clutch that also make blank decks. You can also check eBay. I once got some good blank decks from CCS on their eBay shop. Also, I wanted to thank Isaac Chalice Eaton for providing the music in this video from his album, Takes the Gold. Check it out on Bandcamp.